Hey there, let's talk about remote work strategies to supersize and grow your business. Sharon Horn Elston here with Supersize Business. Curious, have you embraced the concept of remote work for your business, whatever your business is, and for growing and supersizing what you're capable of doing with your business in the world today and in the future? Uh, remote work, I've been working remotely since 2017, actually, and I started a work balance, work-life balance strategy for my personal career and development decades before that so that I could be there for my kids when they had activities so that I could participate in their lives and actually watch them grow up. And there were times I failed miserably at that because I wasn't available because I was too busy doing things that I was setting up thinking I was planning for everybody's future only to discover that uh, I just was missing out on things that I never wanted to miss out on. And so I didn't do that very long, but I did miss a few things along the way. So what the heck is remote work and why do we want to embrace it to grow and build and supersize our business? <clears throat> I think the pandemic taught us and remote work's been around for a really long time. People have worked from home, which is it's now more work from home than work remotely, but it's working somewhere besides at the business's place of business or headquarters, et cetera. It's working in a different location. That's all remote work is. So it might be a shared office space. It might be a, 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 a contract worker type office space, or it might be somewhere in their actual home, in your actual home. I work in my actual home. I have since 2017 exclusively. Uh, and I, I like it that way. And I'm going to tell you why, because there's so many advantages to it. I have several business owner friends, super duper successful business owner friends that have worked remotely and have entirely remote work businesses and teams. And they're extremely successful because of some of the reasons and the strategies I'm going to share with you right now. Number one, remote work's here to stay. Uh, since the pandemic, if you think that it's going to go back to normal, we're in for a rude awakening. There are going to be opportunities and we might as well use it as a strategy and have it work in our favor versus pushing against it and fighting against it. Because once things change, they seldom if ever go back to the way they were before. Uh, you know, sometimes we wish, oh, I wish it was the way it was when I was a kid or a teenager and I didn't have all this responsibility. But the truth is, we really wouldn't want it that way if we could go back. So remote work's here to stay, so we might as well embrace it and use it to our advantage versus uh, complaining or and moaning about it because it's not going to go back to the way it was. So how can we use, I mean, I always just say, ask a better question. How can I use remote work? to benefit me and my organization and help us grow and supersize and, and get our goals and objectives and help the people that are working with us to get what they want as well, because we want those uh, solutions that help everyone. We wanna leverage technology when it comes to remote work, right? Technology is so good now with uh, video meetings and conference calls and Zoom and everything else, all the tools that are available. There's no reason to not communicate well or have project management tools and team building tools and communication tools that help us to, number one, less expensively communicate. It is a whole lot less expensive, and that's probably one of my favorite things about remote work, to have people remote workly than to maintain buildings and offices and all of the things that are required to have everyone on site all the time. Uh, just commuting alone. I, in my corporate career, I literally commuted sometimes two, three hours a day one way, depending on traffic, sometimes it was longer to go to my corporate jobs and soon realized I actually used it as a university on wheels back in the day when we had uh, cassette tapes and CDs. I would listen to things all the time. So I was always learning and always growing. But the vast majority of people were just cursing and, and mad about being stuck in traffic. Uh, so we can leverage technology. We need to cultivate communication. I think one of the things that I found is the most important with respect to being a remote person and uh, having a remote team is communication. We have to be able to communicate effectively both ways in sharing our expectations and in understanding their expectations and clearly communicating what's going on, what you need help with, what you need training and development with, how can I help? And I, I guess as a leader, my whole position is how can I help? Because my job as a leader of my organization is to help other people to get what they want and do their jobs that that they're in our organization for so they can fulfill their purpose. Uh, we want to foster mutual and 
virtual collaborations. We want to have those tools available. We want to have those regularly scheduled events and meetings. Uh, I, I am not a big believer in routinely scheduled meetings, but sometimes they're important for team building. Sometimes they're important, especially with remote work, so people don't feel isolated or alone. Uh, we're never alone, right? It's just as easy as a click or a phone call away to call somebody. But a lot of times, it's it's the same with entrepreneurship and when you're just getting started in business, you feel like you're the only one. Or if you're sick or have a health challenge, you feel like you're the only one. But there are literally millions of people out in the world experiencing the exact same thing you are through their personal experiences at the same time. We just have to remember that. We want to prioritize work-life balance and we need to help people to compact and schedule and compartmentalize certain things if they're working remotely. One of the things I've learned about working remotely is if I had the kids around, I had to find a way to either make sure that they were entertained safely or choose to work at different times when they were sleeping, for example. I did a lot of work late at night when the kids were asleep. Well, I think in my 30s and 40s, I don't think I got, and into my 50s, I don't think I got more than four hours sleep a night for probably those two decades. I don't recommend that. Not very good for personal health or work-life balance. And we want to navigate the challenges. We need to realize, just like any other change or new thing that we're doing or different thing that we're doing, there's going to be good things about it and there's going to be challenges and we need to find ways to solve the problems and the challenges and the setbacks that pop up and deal with them. Is dealing with human beings remotely different than dealing with them face to face every day? Not that much, right? Human beings behave in the way human beings behave. You're going to have awesome performers in remote work and you're going to have people that really struggle with it. People that struggle with it, bring them back into the office. People that do great with it, give them more freedom to, to grow and expand and create and have a, them take personal responsibility and figure out what they need to do to have remote work work for them. Because it has to work for both parties, right? It has to work for the person that's working remotely and it has to work for your business or it doesn't work, right? It's got to work for everybody involved or it's not the right solution and you have to come up with different solutions and different tweaks, just like with everything else we do, every other strategy we use. So remember to look ahead at what's coming down the pipe. It allows us the freedom. Number one, it's less expensive. It requires less resources. It actually requires less time and energy than if people are popping into your office every day and interrupting the flow of what you're doing. So you become more effective and more efficient. Your people become more effective and more efficient if you structure and set things up to make that possible for them while they're working remotely. You know, if somebody's got eight kids at home and they're trying to work remotely, and they don't have a nanny or help or anything else, that's probably not gonna work out very well in terms of the business. The business probably isn't gonna get the attention that it needs unless things are put in place to help that happen. Uh, and that's usually you know, up to the person that wants to work remotely, uh, but businesses can help with that as well. So curious, do you have a remote work staff? Have you worked remotely? Are you working remotely like I am? And what do you love about it? Share in the comments below. And then what have the challenges been that you've run across and are you still facing them or have you found solutions from them that you can share with us so that we can all learn from one another. Share in the comments below because I really want to know. Have a great day and I'll of course be tomorrow with another supersizing your business strategy, a strategy you can use to grow and build your business. All right, have a great day.